Welcome everybody, it's Tammy. Thank you for stopping by Creative Girl Vintage. I'm making for you today these cute little decorative baskets and I'm gonna be using something really unexpected to make them. And I'm gonna show you how to ruffle cray paper on the sewing machine. If you don't have a machine, I'm doing a no-sew version using cupcake wrappers. And also I'm gonna share with you my favorite ideas for filling these baskets up. This is a really easy and cute craft, you guys. I, I think you're gonna enjoy it. And so if you'd like to watch the process, let's begin. Okay, you guys, are you ready to see the secret ingredient for making these baskets? Wood blocks. Yeah, you probably thought, wow, she's really gone and lost her mind this time, but we are going to transform wood blocks into cute little baskets. Who knew, right? Everything I'm going to be using today, I will list below for you in the description box below this video. So the first thing we're going to do is I just grabbed a little scrap of fabric here and I'm going to grab my Fabrifix glue along with it. So we're going to run this little scrap of fabric. It doesn't, it can be any size you want it to be, doesn't matter. It's just up to you because we're just covering the bottom part of our block. You can use a pretty scrapbook paper here. You could put lace or a trim of your choice, or you can paint your block too. So that's the thing I noticed when I was making these. The sky is really the limit on all the different types of materials and ideas that you can get as you're putting these together. Okay, so let me just finish this off right here. Make sure everything is all glued down. I need it a little bit more right there. Okay, and while we're at it, let's take the second block and we'll put some pretty lace on the second block here. Doing basically the same thing we did with the fabric. Okay. I was really getting carried away when I was making these because once you start, there are just so many ideas that pop into your head of all the different stuff you can do. Okay. There, that was pretty simple. Trim that off right there. Okay. Two baskets. Two baskets on their way. Now, we're going to put our handle on at this point. This is a good time to do it. And I have here, these are pale pink vintage pipe cleaners. I'll tell you in a second where I got these. But using your pipe cleaner, they're all basically the same size. I'm going to snip off like about an inch and a half, two inches, a little bit right there just to shorten them just a little bit. And taking my hot glue gun, I am going to put some glue right there on the wooden part and we'll just put this right here and just hold it down a little bit so we know it's gonna stick. So last summer I went to an estate sale and a uh, lady was selling the contents of her craft room. And it was one of those craft rooms of our dreams. You know, the finished basement, the, the whole thing transformed into a crafting space. It was so fabulous. And I felt very lucky to get some of her treasures. And that's where I got these. So, um, you know, pale pink pipe cleaners, you guys. Vintage. Can't leave those behind. I'm flipping this over and we're doing basically the same thing on this side. Just gluing it down and you can see we're getting a basket handle here. Okay. Make sure that's sticking. You can kind of, if you want to, kind of make it a little bit, stretch this out a little bit for your basket handle. All right, so now I know not everybody has pale pink vintage pipe cleaners, right? I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I do because it's not something I would normally have. But um, 
So let's just say we have a pipe cleaner from here. I don't want to get that started right there. A pipe cleaner from the craft store. Okay. So this is just kind of an ugly hot pink one. But what I'm going to do is I know a lot of you have got this from my Etsy shop. This is the pink velvet trim that I sell in my shop. And I know a lot of you have it. So this is just another idea for using it. Okay. So I got this one started here. And what I'm doing is, I'll add a little bit more glue as I'm going. What I'm doing is just spinning my pipe cleaner and wrapping this velvet around it. All right, sorry, I got off to a bad start there, but don't pay, don't pay any attention to that. <laughs> okay, so just keep wrapping all the way around and it's super easy. Here, this is bothering me. Let me let me just fix this. I was messing with this before I started my camera, and I didn't I didn't have that exactly the way it needed to be. So yeah, so just spinning. Really, I'm just spinning the pipe cleaner, and you know, instead of trying to wrap all the way around, wrap that all the way around. It's just super simple, and it covers that pipe cleaner. Here I have one done. In beautiful pink velvet. Now, this is really gorgeous. So whatever kind of ugly color you have, don't worry about it because you can wrap this, this trim around and it's beautiful. All right, we're going to do the same thing right here on this lace block. Putting our handle on the exact same way. Flip it. Oh, so pretty. You can do the same thing here spread it out a little bit push it down you can just bend it don't go too crazy because sometimes these pipe cleaners they, they they bend pretty easy so you just be kind of gentle with it and make a handle all right so that's basically the 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 mechanics of getting our basket started and right now we're going to grab just some plain party streamer cray paper and we're going to take a field trip over to my sewing machine and make some ruffles Okay guys, we are at the sewing machine. I've got my glasses on so your teacher can see what she's doing. So with the cray paper, if you're wanting to make a super long streamer out of this, go ahead and keep this roll in your lap and then work off of it as you're feeding it through. We're just gonna be using a smaller piece today. So I am just going to cut us off a little bit here instead of working off of that roll. Okay, so now we're gonna make two adjustments to the machine. The stitch length, I'm putting it at the longest stitch length I have, which is a five, and then going up here to the tension. My tension usually stays on number four, and I'm gonna move my tension up to a number eight. My strongest tension on my machine is 10, but I've noticed making these streamers before that an eight works really good for my machine. So that's something you can test out on your machine to see what, what works and, and how tight your ruffles come out. Normally, I would go completely down the center as I'm sewing and have equal ruffles on each side. But in this case, um, our the basket that we're making, I want more ruffles on one side instead of the other. So I'm going to run this basically close down to the right side, folding it over just a little bit to get it started. And we'll put a little back stitch in here just to kind of hold things together. It makes it a little easier to work with. Okay. As this is feeding through, I am going to put a slight pull on this. This has a bit of a stretch, and you can lightly give it a little bit more tension by pulling on it. Okay, this is going to get a little bit noisy, but let's go ahead and get started. go. Snip that off and let's look at this. Isn't this pretty? It's very simple, a very simple little process to get something really, really pretty for your project. So speaking of, let's get this back over to the table and put it to work. Okay, you guys, we've got ruffled crepe paper. So 
I'm going to grab the basket we put the little bit of fabric on and I always look like in the back there's a little seam for the fabric so I like designate that for my back so that's where I'm going to get started using the wide side of the ruffle we're going to start gluing right there kind of at the top edge of that fabric just gonna lay that right down and you guys can see where this is going okay Make a line of hot glue. Just press it on all the way around. Super easy. Okay. You're going to notice with your cray paper, if you do it on the sewing machine, that when you do cut it, your stitches, of course, break and want to come loose. It's not a big deal. Sometimes I'll just tap it with a little bit of glue and re-ruffle it with my fingers. Come around the corner here. Oh, I barely made that. I didn't measure and I got lucky. Okay. And look at how cute that is. Okay, that's the cray paper. Now let's go to the no-sew version with the cupcake wrapper. My daughter just got me these. She found them at Walmart. I thought they were so cute. Look at the little daisies. But these were really sweet here. Look at the pattern on them. And they say Happy Spring on the bottom. They're so cute. So what we're going to do with these, and there's, we're going to use the polka dot one too. We're going to use two. I'm just going to put a little snip here to the bottom. This is much easier, I notice, with little tiny scissors. So I'm going to grab my little ones. And we're going to just carefully cut the bottom out here of this cupcake wrapper. Thank you, Jen, for the cupcake wrappers. They're adorable. And look at how cute that is. Oh, did I cut two? Wow, look at that. Well, we got another one. Got one for another project. Those two were really stuck together. Aren't those, aren't those cute? Happy spring. It's like I could find something to use those for, huh? All right, so this is going to be a double layer. So I think I might put my polka dots down first and then this like be the outside layer. So let's see, anywhere we can get started, designated as our back. And since we want the, this layer to be a little bit higher, I'm going to go higher up on the block. Right there, just a line of hot glue. Going to lay it right there, press it down. I notice I'll press it down and just kind of fan it out just a little bit. It'll fan out for you. Around to the side, press it down, fan it out. This makes it a little more fuller. Down. And come around here and I'm gonna finish it up here at the corner. Let's clean our corner up a little bit. This is the inside layer, so you really won't see anything going on here. There, it's all hooked together. Looks a little messy right now, but now we're gonna add this pretty, oh, this is so pretty. It's got butterflies and Easter eggs, so cute. I'm gonna go down to the lace with this one, all right? See kind of where I ended that last one here. This side, this side was a little bit messier. All right, I think I'm gonna go right here in the middle instead of on that edge. I think it'd be a little bit easier, come to think of it, to finish that off. Right out a little bit. Kind of glue. Oh, there's little bumblebees on this. It's cute. So I kind of stuck to a spring theme today for these baskets. Kind of like little Easter baskets for spring, little springtime baskets. Lay that there. And we want to finish up where that comes together. Okay. Oh, so, so cute. So cute. Okay. 
Now, this one I had, this is from Michael's, and it was in the bridal section, you know, where those rolls of tulle are. And I thought this was so pretty with this, like, glitter sparkle through it. So I basically cut some off and then just cut some strips, some long strips, and I made a bow. And it's so light and beautiful. And let's put that in the front of our basket. Yep, this is our front. Let's put it right there where ruffle meets fabric. So pretty, isn't it? And this one here, this is some ribbon. I found this at the flea market. It's a big old roll of some satiny ribbon. Let me get the glue off my fingers here. And I just tied a bow right in there. And this, I thought this worked out really cute. So what I'm going to do, let me make sure that bow's nice and tight. Oops. And just hit the hot glue right there, kind of where paper meets lace. Put that hook on. And then come around here where paper meets lace. And just put that ribbon right on. I thought that turned out kind of cute. And let's finish it off on the back right here for this side. And then do the same thing over here. And kind of cover that up. And we're going to meet in the middle right here. Right there. Yeah. Okay. And you can see here the sky's the limit on, on ribbons and trims that you can put on your basket. So many choices, you know, depending on what you have or, you know, you just might be inspired by, you know, a, a fresh idea going on in your head. Okay. These are cute, right? Now we're gonna fill them. Okay, you guys, I've got some cute ideas for filling up your baskets. Now, I know a lot of you have this bunny sheet from my shop, so I thought I'd just give you some extra ideas to, um, to just get more use out of your bunny sheet too. So that's what we'll do with this first little guy right here. Now, if you follow me, you know you would cut out your little bunny shape from your sheet, like here, Not don't do any fussy cutting yet. I would grab my Create Glue Stick and cover the whole back of this bunny and then lay it on some heavier cardstock behind it. You just want a little firmer, a more sturdier image with your paper and the cardstock is always included on the back here that um, with, the, with, the, with the sheet. So you'll have that. And then I just let it dry a little bit, maybe put it under a book and then cut it out. So I've got one here ready to go. He's got a pretty pink back. Set that one aside. And what we're gonna do with Mr. Bunny here is we're gonna put him on a little stand because we're gonna put him inside this basket. First, how about, now this is just the, the best part. How about a little bit of lace? Right there, a little bit of vintage lace for Mr. Bunny. So cute. That off. And maybe a little flower would be cute. I think that one's broken. Let me go to flower number two here. Here we go. These are really cute flowers. I actually found these on Amazon, and I was going to link them uh, for you guys, but they're... They were unavailable. Then I went back in and it was like a month before they would even be delivered. So I'm thinking they're probably still unavailable. So I didn't link them up because, you know what? I don't like being disappointed. I don't want you guys being disappointed either. All right, I'm gonna take a little craft stick and we're gonna make the bunny even stronger by putting this craft stick right on the back here because we want to enjoy him every year, take him out every year. And this little block here is going to basically be his stand just to hold him up. So let me just put, hold on you guys. I got to reload. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue right there and like he's sitting on the block. Okay, we're going to cut that excess off. 
Okay, let's go to my little cutters here and just trim that away. There we go. He should sit up really nice now on his own. And then let's just take and put him inside of the basket. Now that he has a little stand, we'll pop him right in there. Look at that cuteness, right? Okay, and then let's see, how about if he's holding this little, this is off that same little bunny sheet. Have a bunch of little Happy Easter messages in there. Put that there like that. And if you got an extra little flowers, just put them on your pipe cleaner. Put them all the way around. And let me grab, got some Easter grass. You know, they don't make Easter grass like they used to, do they? It's all kind of like weird. When I was at the flea market, I'm like, oh, let me find Easter grass like I had when I was a kid. My husband said, yeah, good luck with that. Okay, so we'll just got to use the new stuff. But this is really where, you know, you can use paper shred. You can use Christmas tree, tinsel garland, you know. So there's so many options for these little baskets. Shooting some hot glue in there and just putting my Easter grass in there with that bunny. And how cute is that? That's a great way to use up use up any little Easter image that you have. That's just such a sweet little idea. Now this one here, I have got, this is just the Excelsior, okay? Spanish moss, Excelsior, anything you want to put down in there. I mean, this is really, really cute. I, I loved this one. It was so springy. I'll just pop that down in there. And I had two little eggs. I'm sure you can find, right, especially now this time of year, little Easter eggs, little spring eggs just about anywhere. I'm just putting a little hot glue on them, I'm popping them in there in their nest. And this is the little mini bunny that was on the bunny sheet. So, hey, let's just use up mini bunny. And I thought mini bunny would be really cute, like right here. Just put him right on the handle like he's looking at his basket of Easter eggs. Here's a little bunch of forget-me-nots. Let's just tuck those in there. Just have fun filling these baskets up. And then, let's see, do I have another one of those little Happy Easter somewhere? I thought I did. I probably put it into the garbage. I've got um, some pretty pink seam binding and some vintage lace that I tied in a bow. I sold out of this, but I know a lot of you guys have this. So this always makes a beautiful bow. I'm just going to put that right there. And I'm going to put the pink seam binding one right on top of it. Yes, I did have another thing that said Happy Easter. I was going to pop in here. But I don't, like I said, it probably went into the garbage. But you, but you get the idea on how many, how many ways there are just to decorate these darling baskets. Now, I have did some with vintage, so let me grab those for you because I can't wait for you to see those. All right, so here are really some darling possibilities using vintage. This one right here, you guys. Look at this vintage bunny. Now, when you're at the flea market and you find a bunny that has a face like this, you do a happy dance immediately because it doesn't happen every day. But I love the way this one turned out with his little velvet handle. He's just so precious. This one here is a vintage lamb in a little spring basket. I love this one. I This is a, just a little vintage chick. And I use the um, paper shred in this one and a white crepe paper. See how pretty the white looks? This one has a pale yellow handle, which is a new color of velvet trim that I have in my shop for the crafting stash. That turned out really pretty. It has little velvet yellow flowers as well. And now this one 
this is completely off the theme that we're doing for spring and Easter, but it was just to show you that, um, you know, we didn't even consider Christmas and Halloween and Valentine's Day and, I mean, you know, all the holidays out there for these for, to fill these baskets. This one here is the Vintage Ballerina. This Happy Birthday to You came off of a vintage um, birthday card, and this one's done in the pink. I tucked inside of here... This is um, the Christmas tree garland, which looks really pretty inside of this, I think. And also, for the handle here is another option. I took the pink velvet and a sparkly silver pipe cleaner, and I just kind of went around it almost like a candy cane effect, so you can see both colors. So I thought that turned out really sweet, too. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I, You know I love it. I love crafting with you. Um, these little lovelies all need a home, so I'm putting them in my Etsy shop. All my links for everything are below. And as always, happy crafting to all of you. Thank you again for your support for my channel. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will do it so you never miss another project. And I will see you soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.